Now we pretty much have our fence ready to go. In fact, if I wanted to, I could just use this as is. But let's go ahead and make this a little bit more customizable. So what I'm going to do is add in some additional attributes that will show up in our component options window. And as you can see, when I pull up this window, there are no options to choose from. So let's go ahead and add in some. We're going to go back to component attributes and start adding in some components that will show up for the user to work with. Now, the first one I want to work with is the actual height of the fence. Now, as you can see here, we have the lengths all specified. Now, if I want to, I could actually restrict some of those. So, for example, here in terms of scale, if I wanted to, I could actually scale this, and you can see how the scaling is actually affecting this, and I really don't want to do that. So I'm actually going to go ahead and constrain the length of Y to equal six and a quarter inches. So now when I scale this, it's always going to be the same depth. Now in terms of height, I actually do want to be able to scale this so I have different height fences. Now I want to make this available to the user so the user can type in a very specific fence height. So let's go ahead over here to details. We're going to highlight length Z and here I'm going to click on details. And what this does is it tells us what we can do with this particular attribute. So what we want to do is we want to allow the user to edit it as a text box. And then we can give it a label. So we can call it, for example, fence height. And just hit enter. And now when we apply that, you can see that when we go into our component options window, we now have a variable called fence height. So I can just type in, say, if I want it to be 48 inches, it will be exactly 48 inches. Now, in addition to this, we also want to be able to control, say, for example, the spacing of the pickets. So let's go into picket here and we have our variable here for spacing and we want to be able to expose that to the user. Now if I do it this way I could actually click here on details and say users can edit it as a text box. But if I do that, say apply, when I select this component and go into component options you'll see here I don't actually have that. I have to actually kind of dig down and select the individual picket to find the spacing. Well, that's kind of unfriendly in terms of user interface, and I don't want to do it that way. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of here, and I'm going to go down to my spacing here, and I'm going to actually turn it off. User cannot see this attribute. Hit Apply. Now what I want to do is actually have something here that is exposed to the user. This means I have to have it up here in the main component, in fencing. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add an attribute here, and I'm going to enter a custom name. And I'm just going to type in picket spacing. And then I can type in a number. So for example, here I've got 10. And Let's go ahead and say users can edit as a text box. So now when I have it up here and I select it, I go into my component options window. You can see now I have a picket spacing. But the problem is, is that when I change it, nothing happens. That's because it's not connected down here. This number 10 is not connected to the actual picket and its spacing. So what I have to do here is instead of typing the number in, I have to enter in the attribute. So all I have to do is hit equals and then click on picket spacing. So now the spacing here is actually the fencing picket spacing. Hit enter, and that should work. Now it's actually going to revert back to 10, but it's getting its 10 from here. So this should all now work. So now I have picket spacing, and I can say now instead of 10, it's 8, and so on and so forth, or bring it back to 10 or whatever. And we can do the same for some of the other options here. So we could actually do the same for, for example, the post spacing. So here, instead of typing in a number, we can actually add in the attribute from here. So let's go ahead and add an attribute in here, custom name, and we'll call it post spacing. Hit enter. Put in a number. I think I had 72 in there. And now for this, post spacing, I'm actually going to say equals, 
And then go up here, you can barely see it, but here I'm gonna click on post spacing and then just hit enter. So now that I have this here, all I have to do is now expose this. So post spacing, go ahead and click here. Users can edit as a text box, hit apply. And now when we go into our component options here, I have my picket spacing and my post spacing. So for example, if I were to scale this out a little bit more, I could put in my post spacing as say 48. And you can see now it actually affects the behavior of this component. Great, so now we've got a couple more that we could actually add in. One of the ones I'd like to add in would be the width of the pickets. So in order to do that, we actually have to figure out which variable controls the width. So right here, we have the length of x, which is the width of that picket. So all I have to do here is type in a different number. So for example, if I typed in 9, so equals 9, they would be 9 inches wide. If I typed in equals 3, they would be 3 inches wide. Now I can, again, control this by an attribute that I can place up here. So let's go ahead and add in an attribute, custom name, and we'll call it picket width. Once I have that, then all I have to do is just A, type in a number, say 5.5 inches or so, and then come down here to pick it, find this length of X, and instead of equals three, it's going to equal this attribute. So now all I have to do is type in that, and I can do whatever. Now in order to see this, I still need to expose it to the user. So I'm gonna go here to details, and let's expose it by saying user can edit as a text box. And say apply. So you can see here now I can just type in the width of my pickets. But actually, pickets only come in set sizes. They only come in four, six, and eight inches, but which is actually three and a half, five and a half, and seven and a half, because in lumber they usually chop off about a half of an inch. So let's go ahead and make this instead of a text box, let's go ahead and select it from a list. So we're going to add an option here. We're going to say four inches, six inches, and eight inches. Now notice how it already puts that value in, but we can always change that. But a four inch board in lumber speak is actually a three and a half inch board. A six inch is actually five and a half, and eight inches is actually seven and a half. And now that we have that, we actually have a list that determines the actual width of that particular picket. So let's go ahead into component options here. You can see here we have picket width, and all I have to do is just select one, hit apply, eight inches, and so on. So as you can see, by adding in these component options, we can give the user complete control over the way that our fence behaves.